Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop, and we're here today at Lori Holt's house, and we're going to talk about her design boards and how they're her original design boards, and we're going to talk about how she makes them and how she's come up with them. So, Lori, tell me about your design board. Well, I use them when I piece blocks, and I came up with them because, well, you know, I have a larger design board in my studio, like most people do, but um, I came up with small ones so that they're portable, so that you can take them places and use them back and forth from your machine to your ironing board. And uh, when I was teaching beginning piecing classes um, for several years, I found out that the most time that my students made a mistake was between the sewing machine and the ironing board because their pieces would get turned. And so I thought if I could come up with a way that they could lay out their blocks the way that they need to go, and after they've pressed the seams and take them to their machine and sew, then their pieces can be the right direction. And that's, that's how they were born uh, about 20 years ago, and I've been using them ever since. Yeah, and you were telling me if you make six blocks at a time, you'll just put your pieces down, and then you'll stack, and then that's you'll right. stack, and then it's really easy for you to cut some blocks one day and come back and sew the next day. That's right. I can cut as many as I want, and they travel because the fabric sticks to this just like a, like a flannel board. And uh, I make all different sizes for all different blocks. I have big, small, medium, and I just use foam core board. And whenever I have a leftover piece, then I'll make it into a design board. These are the supplies you need. Yes, this is about uh, 11 by 14. I probably used it for the back of a picture frame or something, so I had it left over. So, like what? Is foam this? core. Yeah, you can get it at the um, art supply okay. store, or it's okay. just they usually come the size of a poster board. Okay. And they just have some. It's like two pieces of poster board with foam in the middle. Okay. So you know, for presentations for school and things like that, you can use them. But I use them for a design board. And then I just um, save uh, small pieces of batting left over from quilts. And I just simply use a glue gun and glue the batting on, cut the batting a little bit larger, glue the batting on, and you can leave it at that if you want, but if you want them to look a little bit cuter and edge them with some fabric, and I use two and a half inch strips of fabric. So now we're gonna show you how to make one of Lori's design boards at your house, so you can have one too. Okay, so you need a foam core board, and you can cut it in whatever size you want. Or you can just make one the size that it comes, which is a poster board size. When I cut my foam core board, I don't want to use my sharp blade on my rotary cutter, but I use an old rotary cutter, and I save my old blades just for this purpose, and then I'll just lay a ruler down and cut it the size that I want, turn it around, cut it the same size so that I can get them. Um, the edges aren't real smooth, but we'll cover that up. And then I just take a piece of batting, And cut it just a little bit bigger. I always use a two and a half inch strip of fabric and for this I, I measure all the way around to decide how much I need. For this one I needed um, to cut two two and a half inch by width of fabric strips and so I just joined them together and then I took my iron and pressed it in half like this so that I had a center mark and then I press each side in half so that it can wrap around the edges of the foam core board and have finished edges. But before I do that, I run it through my machine with just a zigzag stitch to kind of keep that all together so that it's easier in the process of wrapping it around. So I just set that aside. Decide which which side of the board I want to cover. And then I just put a line of glue along the edge of the board on one edge. And I'll turn it around and do the other edge directly opposite next and then kind of pull so that I get it smooth and I just let that dry for a few minutes and then I just take my scissors and trim it trim the batting right close to the edge 
And are you going to trim right on the edge or right exactly right on the edge? Even with it. Okay. So I don't wrap the batting around at all. Okay. So one side is the poster board and the other side is the batting. Okay, so now we've got everything trimmed. And we're going to see that Lori trimmed exactly right on the edge right here. And then I start with this fabric and I'm going to glue it right on the edges, on the very outside edges before I fold it over. I'm going to glue it all. So I usually start in the center somewhere, not in a corner. I'll just put a bead of glue. And the zigzag stitches on here kind of help guide where that goes. And then I'll just continue all the way around. When I get to the end, I usually cut it about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, so that it's overlapping. And then I'll take that piece and put some glue on it and just fold it over so that it has a finished edge. And then I'll take and just start gluing it around, you know, the edges down on each side. But I, I usually put the glue right here on the fabric and not on the board. So that's going down the center of the fabric. And I don't do a lot because when you push the fabric down, if you have too much glue, it'll ooze out. And I just work my way around. When I get to the corners, it's just like when you bind a quilt, I just glue it all the way to that edge and then fold down. I'll continue on. And then I just turn it around and do it on the side where the batting is. So it just takes a few minutes, but I usually make you know, two or three when I make them, I'll save all my bits and pieces of batting and foam corn, then I make several. And then you just let it cool off completely and you've got your design board. So now we've finished our um, design board and Lori's going to talk to us about the way she uses her design board. Well, when you cut out a block, you I use it to lay out so I can see where my pieces will go separately and so I can design and you know, see the placement of things, and if I like them, change places, things like that, if I don't. And then also, if I don't have time to sew it, then I'll just cut cut the block, stack another one on top of it to protect it, and set it aside until I do. Most of the time, <clears throat> I'll cut several blocks at a time and stack them all up on top of each other and keep them by my machine. And then when I have a few minutes in between other projects, I'll just hurry and stitch up one of the blocks and that's how I keep up with my projects. Well thanks for watching our video and visit us online at www.fatquartershop.com and visit Lori at her blog also. Thanks for watching.